All right, I'm back with uh, one of my favorite things uh, to work with in DragonOS, which is uh, this SDR for space. It's included in DragonOS. Uh, I've done videos on it before, uh, but I'm going to walk through this particular video, take a look at, um, we'll pull down the latest from the GitHub uh, for the examples. We'll pull the latest SDR VM. And then what I'm going to show is um, right now on this computer uh, that I'm, uh, screen recording on right now has a uh, Halo U adapter, which I'll, I'll show here in a second, uh, connected to it, which is set up as an access point. And then on the other side of the property, through several uh, wooden walls and structures and all kinds of other stuff, is a Pluto SDR sitting out there with a um, essentially like a Y adapter off of the USB port so that I can go um, provide power in. And then I also have another Halo U a USB adapter plugged in, which is essentially bringing up an interface on the Pluto SDR uh, and giving it an IP. Well, technically I assigned a static IP to the Pluto. I'll, I'll show that here in a second. Uh, but I should be able to reach the Pluto over the network, over this uh, 900 megahertz 802.11h network, and uh, not even really have a Pi on the other end running, running uh, SDR for space. I'm just going to run SDR for, spa uh, bleh, for, sp <laughs> for space from the local machine accessing the Pluto over the network. And it seems to work fairly well like that. So, And this is just... A, the beginning. I mean, there's a whole slew of other things. I've did a Kraken SDR over the 900 megahertz. There's probably some other things that I want to do. Anyways, let's get on with this. Uh, if we change into the user source directory, which is pretty much where I pull everything down, um, you can see there's some uh, directions on here as to how to uh, clone this. Uh, I'm just going to modify it a little bit. And we'll clone it and then put it into the SDR VM latest. And we'll just remember that is where we have this at. <clears throat> okay. And another thing I'm going to grab. Now, normally, if you just went other SDR for space, you're going to be sitting in user source SDR for space. And you're going to have everything available. So it is there. Uh, I do have a license that I'm, I'm testing out, um, but but for this video, I'm just going to go and show if you wanted to pull down the latest, you can. Um, I know I, I've downloaded this twice. Uh, Let's see, I'll just put it right here. Okay, so we have the latest SDR VM there, as well as all the latest scripts. I'm going to change settings here. Uh, actually, hmm. I'm going to leave those alone for right now because I'm going to keep this uh, simple. I'm going to go into the RX Spectrum, take a look at Wide Spectrum. And I'm just going to look at the spectrum.js file. I'm going to change a couple things here. This particular script uh, has some variables directly in it, whereas uh, some of the other scripts are looking for that initial settings file that you can make uh, changes. And then once you run the script, it'll pull uh, those settings from there. But in this case, I'm just going to change it directly to the Pluto SDR. You can see the sample rate. And it's going to be a frequency start of 88 megahertz. It's going to end at 108 megahertz. I've shown this before. Just a, a simple um, 
uh, snapshot of the spectrum, which should put a CSV file in the temp directory with the uh, RISI value, values, I think it is, of all the frequencies, and then we should get a GNU plot, uh, an actual image that comes up. Okay, we're pretty much set there. Uh, let me stop a second, switch over, show, uh, so I don't really mind the MAC addresses in this case, it's all the 802, or sorry, or, yeah, 802.11H devices. You can see that I have a uh, access point set up and I have two clients two client 802.11h devices and on the end of those in one case is a uh, rock pi x i'm working on and then in the other case is the pluto sdr and so those are connected you can't really pay attention to the rx rate and, and t the, that megahertz wide it doesn't uh, necessarily totally line up here those are um, like you can see channel 8 is not 2.447 gigahertz that maps out to a 900 and some megahertz frequency and also a bandwidth of I honestly can't remember it's either four or eight I can't remember um, and yeah so what you have to do is uh, set up your clients uh, you have to configure them in my case I've configured it to where the access point is uh, doing the DHCP, the clients are like passing through that DHCP uh, to the um, device that's connected to the uh, Halo U device. And then, let's see, if you want to see what what is it or what device is it, here you go, Halo U. And then, um, let's see, what else can we do? So, I'm going to load up the dot .20. So we're going to go direct to the Pluto SDR over the 900 megahertz. And when you, uh, let's see, yeah, let's see, so do, 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 wired Ethernet using a USB Ethernet adapter. Okay, so you know if you plug the uh, Pluto SDR USB into your computer, it comes up almost as a SD card. There's a configuration file there. All I did was change the USB Ethernet adapter to 1.20, which... Uh, falls in line with the uh, IP scheme that I'm running here for the 802.11h and then everything just lined up and I'm able to get to it. All right so let's see what else so let's just jump over I'll close this out um, at least with with uh, with this video anyway doing in the survey so you can do this a couple different ways um, I'm just going to stay in this directory and call the SDR VDM directly. If I do a dash H, I can see uh, the different options there. I want to do file or dash F. And we'll do the spectrum.js. I guess before we do that, just to show, if I do soapy utility dash dash find, it should find that Pluto SDR on the local. Uh, network. So then when I run the spectrum.js so I'm not a hundred percent sure when it's running this way uh, I guess I could have pulled up something and monitored the um, the network interface like how much uh, uh, bandwidth or you know how exactly is that uh, four um, four mega samples per second or whatever it was the sample rate that I sent it I, how that's actually working and getting the data across um, but let's see what the end result is here when it when it finishes this uh, spectrum survey there you go so 95 yep there's a radio station there there so you can see if you hover over it's 95.1 bottom left hand there you can see uh, information yeah so it, I mean that was a fairly basic um, but knowing that this works now should be able to set up some of the more advanced things that I've shown in the past and pull the information uh, across like the Grafina with the influx DB uh, probably the whisper CPP see how that works um, yeah 
Okay, so there you go. There's again the 802.11H uh, and in this case a remote spectrum survey with the Pluto STR uh, literally just sitting out there with a battery and the, uh, the other 802.11H uh, Halo U device. Alright, thanks.